Morning Community Church, it is such a privilege to speak to you today and it's just so exciting that we are all part of God's church, um, His church across cities um, and we look at His global church, it's, it's just incredible. So I just want to say well done for all that you're doing in Marandera and in the community and we pray for you from uh, this end of the country and uh, I'm just excited at what God's going to do um, in you as a church and through you as you reach out to the community. So just well done and know that you are in our prayers. And I know that you've been looking over the past few weeks at Old Testament characters and sort of God's plan through them. And so we're going to continue with that today. And I was going to look at uh, someone different and look into the life of Rahab, but I really felt God uh, led me to Noah and to really uh, look into the story of Noah, maybe from a different light and then also at God's great plan. So I want us to pray and then we will dive into it together. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for the privilege of being your church in Zimbabwe at this time. I want to thank you for Community Church of Marandera and all that you're doing in them. And I pray for your blessing over them, that they would live out what you've called them to in that city and in the school communities around, that they would have a great impact for you. And as we dive into your word today, as we dive into just the story of, of Noah and what you would what you would tell us through that. I ask that you would speak in a powerful way in this time together. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. So I'd love us to read from Genesis 6 verse 9 together and then we're going to pull out some points from that. So I'm reading from the CSB translation but you can follow along as well. So this is what it says in Genesis 6 verse 9. These are the family records of Noah. Noah was a righteous man blameless among his contemporaries, Noah walked with God. And Noah fathered three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight, and the earth was filled with wickedness. God saw how corrupt the earth was, for every creature had corrupted its way on earth. Then God said to Noah, I have decided to put an end to every creature, for the earth is filled with wickedness because of them. Therefore, I'm going to destroy them along with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it with pitch inside and out. This is how you're to make it. The ark will be 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet high. You're to make a, a roof, finishing the sides of the ark to within 18 inches of the roof. You're to put a door in the middle of the ark. Make it with lower, middle, and upper decks. Understand that I am bringing a flood, floodwaters on the earth to destroy every creature under heaven with the breath of life in it. Everything on the earth will perish, but I will establish my covenant with you. You will enter the ark with your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives. You are also to bring into the ark two of every living creature, male and female, to keep them alive with you. Two of everything, from the birds according to their kinds, from the livestock according to their kinds, from the animals that crawl on the ground according to their kinds, will come to you so that you can keep them alive. Take with you every kind of food that's eaten, gather it as food for you and for them. And Noah did this. He did everything that God had commanded. Now read a little bit more. Then the Lord said to Noah, enter the ark, you and all your household, for I've seen that you alone are righteous before me in this generation. You take with you seven pairs, a male and its female, of all the clean animals and two of the animals that are not clean, a male and its female, and seven pairs, male and female, of the birds of the sky. Quite a serious task that he had to do. Thankfully, God helped him in order to keep offspring alive throughout the earth. Seven days from now, I will make it rain on the earth 40 days and 40 nights, and every living thing I've made, I will wipe off the face of the earth. And Noah did everything the Lord commanded him. Noah was 600 years old when the flood came and water covered the earth. So Noah, his sons, his wife, and his sons' wives entered the ark because of the flood waters. From the clean animals, unclean animals, birds, and every creature that crawls on the ground, two of each, male and female, came to Noah and entered the ark, just as God had commanded him. Seven days later, the flood waters came on the earth. Now, to many of you listening, uh, this may be a story that is, is common to you. You've heard so many times before. It's interesting that in the world in which we live, biblical stories like this are less and less common 
commonly known by the young and the old. My brother is currently in Sweden. He is living and working there. Sweden is considered to have a population of Christ followers or those who would even call themselves Christians at about 0.5%. That means that the majority in that bracket, in that nation, would never have heard of a Bible story, wouldn't know any common Bible story. So to you, it may be common, maybe not if you're exploring faith and you're with us today, but for many across the world, this story is something that they wouldn't have heard before at all. So a number of years ago, I had the privilege of being part of a church transition. The existing pastor had planted the church many years before and uh, it, had, it had grown and developed and he was looking to retire and step down. He'd served it faithfully and he was getting on in years. He wanted to ha hand over leadership but remain part of the church. So I was passionate about the area I cared about. It was close to where I had grown up. And so I approached another pastor friend as well. And we, we chatted through this with that leader and some of his team about how could we really help in this process of transitioning the church. You see, I believe with all my heart that God hates to see churches die. He wants to see healthy transition from leadership over different generations and for his church to continue to grow. So our plan was that we would get different leaders from the church and we would join together with the existing um, leadership of the church and then we would talk about vision for the future. And then what we would do is we would start an evening service and with, with sort of a certain flavor and culture and then over time we would transition that into the morning service and the, the leader would be able to step out and it would just be a, a really clear transition process and the church would continue to grow. Now, I remember without a shadow of a doubt sitting in one meeting very close to crunch time of the sort of handover process. And it was suddenly clear in the meeting that there were some misunderstandings, that we weren't on the same page. There, there, was, yeah, there was some real conflict. And I sat there as a young 20 year old or 20 few years old, and I just sat going, I just don't think I can move forward with this. I don't think this is going to happen. I don't think this transition is going to happen. There's just too many things that aren't clear. And, and I sat there going on one hand feeling God had really asked me to be part of this and, and to see this church transition and the other going, there is no ways that this is ever going to happen. To me, it felt like God asking me to build the ark. That's what it felt like. It felt like the task was too huge for me to do. It was kind of impossible. In some respects, I didn't want to do it. And some, I believe that God did want to do it, but it felt like him asking me to build the ark. I wonder what the Lord has asked you to do in the past that has felt to you as large a task as building the ark. Maybe it's something he's asking you to do right now. It could be that it's someone who God's putting on your heart to build a friendship with who you really don't like very much. <laughs> and he's asking you to build this friendship and he keeps nagging you about this. But to you, it looks like an impossible task. Maybe it's to forgive someone who hurt you a long time ago. And you feel God saying, you need to let this go. You need to forgive the person. You need to pick up the phone and say, I forgive you. And it just feels like it's something you can't do. Maybe it's a dream God's put on your heart many years ago that you've never acted on and he keeps bringing it to your mind and it's something scary, it's stepping out on faith and you know in your own strength you won't be able to do it, but he's asking you to. Maybe it's an out of the blue open door that he's given you in the recent weeks or days. I don't know what it is, but each of us have faced arc moments, arc building moments and we will in the future. So no matter what it is, I have no doubt that many of us have or will face requests like this from the Lord. Because you see, He wants to use us, just as He wanted to use Noah to fulfill His great purpose, He wants to use us to fulfill His plans and purposes on earth. And so He's going to ask you and I, and the challenges and the choices on us, will we step into God's plan and purpose? Will we step into Him continuing to work in the world as He did with Noah? So, what I want to look at is four points, four key things of what's needed for us to fulfill God's plan for our lives, which Noah followed through on and which God wants you and I to follow through on. The first one, we need to position ourselves 
to hear God's voice. We need to position ourselves to hear God's voice. Look at this in verse 9, 6 verse 9. Uh, these are the family records of Noah. Then look at this part. Noah was a righteous man. He was blameless among his contemporaries. Noah walked with God. This is the place we need to be in order to hear Jesus Christ speaking to you and I. It takes drowning out the noise. It takes putting away life's distractions. It takes being still before him. It takes making a stand to say yes to God and his ways. It takes relying on Christ and not ourselves. It's about believing the promises of God even when it doesn't look like they're taking place. It's about putting our faith and trust in the king each day. Sure, we're going to mess up. No, it wasn't perfect. But Noah's heart was, I want to be blameless, I want to be holy, I want to walk with God each and every day. When we're living in that sort of place, it opens us up. We're in the right position, the right heart and the right mind to actually hear that still small voice, to actually hear what the Lord is asking of us. It's not always an easy place to be in, but it's something that God is asking you and I to be in. It's the way that Noah lived. So we need to position ourselves in that place. That's the first one. Second one, we need to courageously obey. We need to courageously obey. Now this conversation that God had with Noah was no small conversation. He explained to him, in a manner of speaking, Noah, I'm gonna destroy the world. There's no one good left except you and your family. I'm going to destroy the world. I'm going to wipe it out. I'm going to start again with your family and with the creatures and animals. This would have been a cup dropping moment. Can you imagine Noah sitting, sipping a, a cup of coffee across from uh, the Lord and God's laying out his plan. I can imagine Noah spitting out that coffee, shaking a little bit, dropping his cup. That's the kind of thing God was asking him to do. But look at Noah's response three times in the passage. This is so key. In uh, chapter 6, verse 22, and Noah did this, he did everything that God commanded him. First time. Then in 7, verse 5, God asks and explains more things, and Noah did everything that the Lord commanded him. Chapter 7, verse 5. And then chapter 7, verse 9, two of each male and female came to Noah and entered the ark just as God had commanded him. If we want to see God at work in our lives, it's going to take radical, courageous obedience, even if the requests don't make much sense to us, even if they seem impossible or downright crazy. That would have seemed like that to know. That is a crazy request of God to ask him to do. So what God asks of us will always line up with his heart in scripture, but it won't always be easy. In fact, I would say it almost will never be easy. We'll only be able to do everything the Lord commands us if we know him. So you see the step by step. Firstly, Noah walked with God, so he knew God. He knew God's character. He knew how much God loved him. He knew how much God cared for him. He knew the power and majesty of who God was. So because he had positioned himself to hear God's voice, he was able to courageously obey because he knew he could trust in the Lord. You see, we can't live a life for Christ without courage. It's not possible. So next time he asks you to step out, go for it in the big and the small. It might be as little as having a conversation with someone and, and for, for you that's really scary, but you feel God asking you to do that. It could be on a different scale, but it will always take courage to live out the purpose that God has for our lives. So firstly, we position ourselves to hear God's voice. Secondly, we courageously obey even when it doesn't make sense. Thirdly, we need to patiently persevere in what he calls us to. Now, estimates are the ark took between 55 and 75 years for Noah and his helpers, his family and other helpers, maybe servants to build. Now, I'm not sure if this is exactly correct. I haven't done all the research in the world on it. But the bottom line is, it took some time. Now, this wasn't only physically exhausting for Noah. Can you imagine? No fancy machinery or anything else. So him and his, his family and maybe some servants he had, it would have been all physical manual labor. What about the mocking and ridicule of passerbys? If Noah 
and his family were the only ones really following God at the time, and the majority weren't and couldn't care less about God at all, can you imagine the mock and ridicule every day of people walking past and year by year they saw this growing bit by bit. Can you imagine them mocking, no, what the heck are you doing? What an idiot, what a nutcase. And he would have been saying, but, but guys, this, the reality is, is that there's a flood coming and there's mocking and there's ridicule. I wonder even some of the questions from his family. Maybe his wife and sons would have been like Noah, it's been 35 years. You know, did you actually hear God right? Did you really hear him say this? Because you've made us build this for 35 years. It's going to take us another 20 years. Did you really hear God in this process? But we press on towards the prize. We fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. We honor him even when the going gets tough, even when it makes no sense. We patiently persevere when mocking and ridicule comes. It's so interesting. If you look at so many entrepreneurs and people who've developed products or have achieved things in life, so often they say that it was at the point of giving up. It was right. They just felt like they couldn't carry on anymore. That was the point where there was suddenly a breakthrough. And I think it's so true in our walk with the Lord. The Lord is always challenging us. He's always wanting us to go deeper in our faith, to rely on Him, to persevere, because He's wanting to train us. He's wanting to instruct us. And I think so often we sort of give up on God and what He's asked us to do right at the point where it would be an explosive growth in our personal faith and in what He wants to do in our lives. And I think there would have been so many moments like that for Noah, so many where He was like, Lord, I... I'm going to give up. I, I, there's no ways I can keep persevering. I, I just, I'm running out of patience, Lord. It's been too many years. When God has asked you to do something, fulfill his plan, he'll give you everything that you need. But it's only going to happen with reliance and strength on him. And I am sure that there's going to be perseverance that's needed in that process. There's going to be some stretching because God wants to make us more like Christ. And so, no one, no doubt, went through that. So, so that's, the, that's the progression, and we've got one final one. So we position ourselves to hear God's voice. Secondly, we courageously obey, even if it doesn't make sense. It'll always be in line with Scripture. Thirdly, we patiently persevere, maybe with a friendship, maybe with a project, maybe with a vision God's put on our heart, even when the going gets tough. And finally, the end result, we get to celebrate and rejoice at being part of God's great plan and purpose. If Noah had not positioned himself to hear God's voice, if he hadn't courageously obeyed, if he hadn't patiently persevered, even when it didn't make sense, he wouldn't have been able to be part of God's great story in the way that he did. Can you imagine when that rain began to fall, when those floodwaters rose, when the animals were in the ark, when the, the, the door was shut and when his family was there? Can you imagine what Noah felt? Can you imagine walking out on dry land as the, the new family starting again with all these animals that had survived? Can you imagine what Noah would have felt? Can you imagine what he, the privilege of him being part of God's great plan? It must have felt surreal. It must have felt humbling. It must have felt exhilarating. But just this overall privilege of being used by the Lord. That's my heart for you as community church, for you as individuals, for, um, for everyone who's a Christ follower, my heart is that we would be able to live out God's plan for us in our lifetimes. That's God's heart for us. He doesn't need us, but He wants to use us. He loves us. He's created us for relationship and community. So He wants to use us as part of His plan. And I don't want to miss a single moment to be used by him. I don't want you to either. Be it him putting someone on your heart to help in, um, at, at the shops. Be it someone to go and visit. Be it something greater. And every little thing, God wants to use us. And so the final takeaway from this story is that it points to the greatest story. You see, Noah is a picture of, Je of what Jesus Christ would later come to do. Noah honored God, and as a result... Him and his family were saved from God's wrath against sin. And they walked out the ark on the other side of the flood into a new life. And that's a tiny picture of what Jesus came to do. Because you see, Jesus 
honored his father and Jesus stepped down into our world and Jesus made a way for us to enter safety so that we aren't um, swept away by God's wrath by believing and trusting in him and as a result of Jesus sort of being in our ark in a sense as a result we step out into a new life in Christ on earth and for all eternity and so maybe you've never given your life to Christ Maybe you've read the story before and you've never seen it in light of God's great plan and what, what, the, what it was pointing towards. And I want to say that you can turn to, to Christ right now. You can turn to Him to, for forgiveness of your sins, that God's wrath would pass over you, that you would be, find safety within Christ and that He would give you new life and new purpose. Or maybe you've known the Lord for, for many years. Maybe you've been part of church for many years, but maybe your faith has just got a little bit stale. Maybe you're sort of going through the motions. Maybe you're living in, in sort of this a, a safe community of faith, but you aren't really looking out to the rest of the world. And God would challenge you today and he would say, if you would rely on me, if you would turn to me afresh, if you would position yourself, if you would courageously step out, if you would patiently persevere, you're going to get to celebrate being part and, and having the privilege of being part of my plan. And he will. He will help you. And he'll give you those moments to step out. And so I, I want to pray for you if that's okay as we close off today. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this time that we've had together. I want to thank you that you're at work in each of our lives. I want to thank you that you're the living God who is fulfilling your great plan through all the ages and that you want to use us. I just pray for everyone tuning in right now. I ask that we would, we would take the lessons from Noah that we would be men and women who listen carefully for your voice, position ourselves, quiet and life around us to listen, that we would courageously step out even when it doesn't make sense, that for those of us now who are struggling and it feels like it's hard to persevere in what you've called us to, you would help us to persevere. And ultimately, Lord, I pray that in this lifetime and beyond, we would be able to celebrate what it feels like to have been part of your plan and your purpose. I pray for Community Church. I pray that they would live out what you've called them to in Marandera and beyond, that many would come to a faith in you as a result of the people at Community Church living out what you've called them to. Thank you that we all get to be a part of what you're doing. In your amazing name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for, for listening and li for listening to me sharing and for trusting me to, to share a message with you this Sunday. Um, I pray that it's blessed you and challenged you and encouraged you. And please know that we continue to pray for you as a church. So thank you so much and have a great rest of your day.